So we just recently finished celebrating Superman Day, right? Big Blue, the archetype, the standard. And he should be your favorite superhero because I don't understand the hate that Superman gets. He does get a lot of hate and he shouldn't. Superman is like, he is the superhero that all other superheroes are measured against. I don't think if there wasn't a Superman, there wouldn't be a genre of comics or movies for superheroes. So I think we need to put some respect on the name of Kal-El. Clark Kent deserves his flowers today. And I, for one, Nix, appreciate and respect Superman. And for those of you who always want to root for Batman, thinking that he can watch Superman You're kidding yourself. At the end of the day, Batman is just a dude in a bat costume. And he's not watching Superman at all. So y'all can hang that up. It's not happening. It ain't gonna happen. Happy Superman Day from DYSG. Ladies and gentlemen, blurds and nerds, freaks and geeks. This is Do You Speak Geek? Episode 81. Welcome, welcome, everyone. This is Do You Speak Geek. I am your host, Nix, and this is the podcast where we bring you all the latest and greatest in the geek and nerd realm. Shout out to everybody who has been rocking with us thus far and all the new listeners, followers, subscribers. Welcome to the ride. Spreaker, home team, shout out to you guys. If you're listening to the podcast, you're probably listening on Spreaker, but if not, there are other outlets like Google Podcast, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora, Audible, Google Podcasts. We're kind of everywhere. So wherever you listen to your podcast, please be sure to find Do You Speak Geek, hit that subscribe button, and keep rocking with DYSG. As you rock with DYSG, please hit up doyouspeakgeek.com, the central hub for everything DYSG. We have blogs, we got merch. Speaking of merch, starting today, leading up to Father's Day, if you enter the promo code DAD2021, you get 20% off. Yeah, we're running a Father's Day special, so... Hit up doyouspeakgeek.com slash merch, put some stuff in your cart, enter that promo code DAD2021, get 20% off, send your dad a t-shirt, send your dad a tumbler, fanny pack, whatever. Bless dad with some DYSG merch. Follow us on our social medias. That's Facebook at DYSGFB. Twitter at DYSG underscore tweets and Instagram at Do You Speak Geek. Apologies to everyone who was looking forward to the Angelique Roche interview. However, Dono decided to try to go plus ultra and use that all for one and sustain a bit of an injury. But to everyone who has been praying and sending their warm wishes, the kid is doing just fine and he will definitely recover from this speedily and swiftly and correctly. Uh, but thank you all for your warm words and we appreciate everyone's concern. Speaking of Dono, YouTube is the only place where you can find the Dono and Daddy show. Please be sure to hit that subscribe, like Detroit, smash that bell for all notifications and leave your comments. We want to know what y'all think. Now, we're not going to cover E3 as much in this episode. We record the shows on Sundays. So as we speak right now, as I'm recording, E3 is still going on. I will give you a piece of what we have for E3 right now, and we'll give you the rest in a follow-up episode coming up next week. Until then, let's hop into my favorite portion of the show. Y'all know the vibes. Source Wall. Man, you come right out of a comic book. Behold the source wall. Can you read, my son? Well, that depends. 
There is nothing wrong with reading a story and looking at the pictures. Enough said, Stan. The pull list this week. Yo, this one is all ready. Lock, stocked, and barrel to be the Source Wall Wednesday pick. Ladies and gentlemen, Static, Season 1, Issue Number 1, fam. Let's go. At long last, the most famous face of the Milestone universe is making his shocking return. Bullied nerd, <clears throat> excuse me, bullied blurred, Virgil Hawkins wasn't the kind of kid you normally find on the streets at a protest, but like anyone else in the city of Dakota, he was fed up. I feel you, Virgil. Unfortunately, the first time he stood up to raise his voice, the world turned upside down. The experimental tear gas release that left some of his classmates maimed or dead, but it left Virgil and others with stunning new abilities. Virgil has power inside him now, real power. The ability to channel and manipulate electromagnetic fields, but there's anger buried inside him too. What is he supposed to do about all this? At first and foremost, what is he supposed to do about his bullies? Now that they've got superpowers too. A dynamic creative team of new comic voices and milestone media veterans join forces to open a new chapter in the most iconic black teen superhero in comic history. <sighs> Can't wait for this one. Definitely buying a variant, definitely buying a plane issue. Y'all, go get this book. Captain America number one is going to be a tie-in to the Infinity Stones story. Captain America vs. Overtime, the fugitive known as Overtime, broke out of death row when the Time Stone chose to bond with his soul, giving him powers he barely understood. Now, thanks to Captain America, his time is up. Should be a dope book. Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow, number one. Kara zor has seen some epic adventures over the years, but finds her life without meaning or purpose. Here she is, a young woman who saw her planet destroyed and was sent to Earth to protect a baby cousin who ended up not even needing her. What was it all for? Wherever she goes, people just look at her through lenses of her Superman. Just when Supergirl thinks she's had enough, everything changes. An alien girl seeks out her for a vicious mission. Her world has been destroyed, and the bad guys responsible are still out there. She wants revenge, and if Supergirl doesn't help her, she'll do it herself, whatever the cost. Now a Kryptonian, a dog, and an angry, heartbroken child head out into space on a journey that will shake them to their very core. Should be pretty good with Kara zor it's either hit or miss. There have been some good Supergirl stories, while the rest just seem kind of lacking. I don't think anyone really knows how to write Supergirl just yet, but I think we'll see what happens with this book here. It sounds pretty interesting, but we'll see how the rest of the issues pan out. And finally, Radiant Black number five. The first arc of Radiant Black ends here. Radiant Red is still out there. He needs to be stopped before anyone else gets hurt. But after the events of the last issue left Lockport and the world reeling, is Radiant Black up to the task? And will he be in this fight alone? Definitely am going to get the uh, graphic novel of this. I'm going to get the uh, collection, Volume 1. Should be good. Radiant Black has been one of my favorite books here for the past few months. Please read this final issue if you haven't been keeping up. If you've been keeping up, read this final issue. In Source Wall News, Marvel reveals a new X-Men team in a new trailer. Now, a new X-Men team is making their debut across the event of Hellfire Gala this summer, but Marvel Comics is already hyping up the new team's adventures in their own book. This is the restart X-Men number one. Mutant Kind has chosen its champions, Cyclops, Marvel Girl, Polaris, Sunfire, Rogue, Sink, and Wolverine, X-Men 3 Wolverine will serve as the first X-Men team since Jonathan Hickman transformed the franchise in House of X and Powers of X. The superhero squad's fearless adventures will be told in the pages of X-Men, the new flagship X title debuting on July 7th. Once again, protecting a world that has hated and feared them for their whole life, 
original X Men X, uh, yeah, original X Men Cyclops and Marvel Girl have rejected the notion that mutant kind is only out for itself and brought back the world's premier team of superhero superhumans superheroes. Sorry, yeah, I'm all over my words right now. Things might be complicated between the mutant homeland of Kakoa and the rest of the Marvel Universe, but to the X-Men, things are simple. You do what's right, you protect those who need protecting, and you save the world we all share. Good policy. Should be a good book. So far, everything that's been done that spun out of House of X, Power X has been phenomenal. Jonathan Hickman, great job. This should be no different. And also coming out of Marvel, the Darkhold Saga to bring chaos to the Marvel Universe. Now, months after Marvel's Darkhold event was delayed due to the global pandemic, the House of Ideas has announced the group of titles it's returning later this fall. This This past Friday, Marvel unveiled the Darkhold Alpha Number 1, a one-shot from Steve Orlando and Cian Torme, that will kick off a spellbinding tale. The mini event will take place through a series of one shots featuring Iron Man, Wasp, Black Bolt, Blade, and Spider Man as the team works to stop Doctor Doom from destroying reality as we know it. To save everything as we know it, the group of heroes must read through the dark hold, oh my god, and turn themselves insane. <laughs> this is gonna be fire. I can't wait to read this one. It's going to be a mind trip. I cannot wait. Let's watch this. Watch this, y'all. Thunder. 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 Lannister always pays his debts. Whoa, dude. I am the villain of the story. All right, people, first look at Camrys Johnson as Batwing from Batwoman has been revealed. A new hero will be joining Arrowverse in Batwoman Season 2. The CW revealed a first look at Camrys Johnson's character Luke Fox in his new Batwing identity and attire. The suit looks amazing, people. I definitely uh, like what they're doing here with this suit. It's very authentic. For those of you who are uneducated, uh, Batwing is an actual character. He's not a Black Nightwing. He is an actual character from the DC comic universe. Cameras put this quote out here on his Twitter. The same day that a DC comic book I wrote hit the shelves about one of the coolest superheroes ever made, we're officially announcing that I'm about to become that superhero. The first live action Batwing in history, fighting crime right next to Batwoman. A dream come true, a complete honor, and a message to every little black boy out there that you can be a hero too. You already are one. So yeah, he's mentioning that he actually had a stint of writing a strict to digital Batman comic for Batwing. So please be sure to check that out and read that. And how cool is it that the guy who is writing the story is actually becoming the character? That's, that's pretty dope, I would say. The Aquaman 2 title has been revealed by James Wan. The director had a production meeting to set the stage for the production of the sequel. And in posting a couple of photos from the event, revealed to fans the name will be called Aquaman The Last Kingdom. Presumably referring to Atlantis itself, although given the fact that we already got a pretty good sense of Atlantis' identity in the first film, it's possible that that title might have a dual meaning and we might be introduced to a new contender for the undersea crown in the next outing, which brings back Jason Momoa and also Amber Heard. Please save your booze. <laughs> of course, with the caption Titus rising on Juan's Instagram post, it seems plausible that Atlantis could rise again, becoming a part of the world of man and throwing the climate and or the global balance of power into chaos. Well, we'll see what happens here. I mean, the Guacaman sequel was bound to happen someday. Um, the first outing, outing, I think, was amazing. I still to this day could not believe the fact that I was sitting in a theater watching an Aquaman movie and was enjoying myself. I could not believe that. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna see this one too and we'll see what happens in the Lost Kingdom. Mindy Kaling's Velma will reimagine the character. So we have the HBO Max series coming out with Velma and we're going to see the character reimagined as an East Indian girl. 
East Asian descent, Velma will also be skipping over some big franchise connections, such as the Mystery, Mach- the Mystery Machine and Scooby-Doo himself. <sighs> wow, that's a lot of stuff to cut out there. Warner Media's Tom Asham, president of Warner Brothers Global Kids, Young Adults and Classics, gave a keynote address about the upcoming slate. Uh, it's not for children, but we have a Mindy Kaling project called Velma because she decided to reimagine what Scooby-Doo would be like if Velma were of East Asian descent and live in a different world. There's no dog and there's no van, but we have our four key characters through a different lens. Let's see how that plays out. I think it'll be interesting and uh, I'm here for it. She-Hulk reportedly cast Good Place star Jamila Jamil as the as a classic Marvel villain. Now, according to a new report from the Illuminati, love those guys, Jamila Jamil, star of The Good Place, has joined the cast of She-Hulk to take on the role of Tatiana. Titiana? Titania? That girl, right? <laughs> In this MCU courtroom comedy, Jamil Tatiana will be a social media influencer with a dangerous dark side. At this point, there's no word on how substantial Tatiana's role will be in the series, but given her standing rivalry with She-Hulk, it won't be surprising if she turns out to be a major character. Like many other in the Marvel shows and Disney+, She-Hulk is putting together a widely impressive cast Tatiana Manslay, alongside with Ginger Gonzala and Hamilton Tony winner Renee Ellis Goldsberry. Mark Ruffalo will also be reprising his role as Hulk, a.k.a. Bruce Banner, the cousin of Jennifer Walters, played by Tatiana Mansley. Also returning is Tim Roth's Abomination, a character we haven't seen since The Incredible Hulk back in 2008. Shaping up to be a pretty good cast. I did not know it was going to be a comedy. Not sure how I feel about it just yet, but uh, I'm willing to wait for a trailer before I make any judgments. How about that? Me being mature and stuff. Fanboys, take note. And finally, we have Netflix's Geeked Week announcements. We're going to go ahead and jot through these real quick. Let's go, people. Seeing it ranked at a stellar 55 million viewers in its first months, Come to no surprise that Netflix is bringing back Shadow and Bone for a second season. There are plenty more books in the Grizz Havers waiting to be adapted, and it looks like the cast are just as excited about their return. The Umbrella Academy Season 3 is coming, and to get us all excited, Netflix unveiled all 10 episode titles, which fans of the graphic novel may recognize. Hit up online and check those out. Maybe you might see an Easter egg or two. Jason Momoa is starring in the upcoming Netflix action film Sweet Girl about a devastated husband who vows to bring justice to the people responsible for his wife's death while protecting his only daughter. Man, I am I would not want to be in that guy's way at all. <laughs> Jason Momoa is way too big. Vikings may have ended its sixth season late last year, but a spinoff over at Netflix is being developed. Releasing by uh, Netflix, a behind the scenes a behind the scenes look, Vikings Valhalla with star Sam Corlett. The series is set a hundred years after the original one ends, and embarks on a new journey following some of the most famous Vikings that ever lived. Cool. Mary Elizabeth Winstead's new film didn't get a trailer, but it did get a cool motion poster with a date announcement. Kate, the film, follows a ruthless criminal operative who, after being irreversibly poisoned, has less than 24 hours to exact revenge on her enemies and in the process form an unexpected bond with the daughter of one of her past victims. You'll find it on Netflix on September 10th. (sighs) Crazy, right? They have poisoning you and... You got 24 hours to live? What would you do? <laughs> Shout out to Mace. Uh, the first pictures from the highly anticipated second season of Lock and Key were revealed. It's also announced that season two will be premiering in October. Also, after years of saying it can't be done, Neil Gaiman's The Sandman is finally getting a live adaptation. Netflix released its first behind the scenes look at the exciting DC comic adaptation. Fans of teen horror master R.L. Stein have a lot to look forward to with Netflix's adaptation of Fear Street. 
three films based on the classic books and the first trailer, I guarantee you will have you shook. And finally, people, because I'm such an 80s baby, fans of the old He-Man and the Masters of Universe cartoons are in luck because the classic animation is back and looks better than ever. It looks like an anime, to be honest with you. And if it's like an anime, I'm called anime. I don't care if it's in Japan or not. That's what it is. That's what it's going to be. DYSG says so. Let's hop into film life. Peace, love, and video games. That sound like Donkey Kong. That man is playing Galaga. All right, gamers, like I said, people, here's the first piece of our E3 news. Like I say, as I'm speaking to you right now, E3 is still going on, but I promise I will not leave you guys hanging. I will definitely be giving you up to date coverage if you follow our Instagram as well as our Twitter, and we'll be dropping news there to keep you guys all informed. But for now, since you're here with the pod, let's rock and roll with Ubisoft. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora brings us back to Pandora. It was a trailer that showed us a glimpse of various beautiful biomes. It will be a first person open world adventure game set in the Western Frontier, a never before seen part of Pandora featuring a living and reactive world. It will once again pit the Navi against humans and their mechs. Sounds like we're getting Avatar Part 2 just in video game format. Is that what you had planned, James Cameron? Hmm, you crafty, crafty man. Based on the 2016 multiplayer VR game, the upcoming Werewolves Within movie is set to arrive in theaters June 25th. Looks pretty dope, y'all check that out. Just Dance 2022 will be launching on November 4th with 40 new songs, including an exclusive version of Todrick Hall's Nails, Hair, Hips, Heels. Ubisoft also revealed its plans to bring cross-play and cross-progression to Rainbow Six Siege. Its cross-progression is also coming sometime early in 2022, but the plans have begun starting on June 30th will be for PC, Google Stadia, and Amazon Luna. Ubisoft also announced Rocksmith Plus, a subscription service for its popular guitar teaching software that lets you plug an electric guitar via USB adapter and learn popular songs by following along with notes as they appear on your screen. You can also sign up for an upcoming closed beta version today. And finally from Ubisoft, we have the Far Cry 6 DLC plans which allow people to play as villains from previous games in the series. The season pass will also include Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Far Cry 6 looks insanely dope. I can't wait to get on that. The Rocksmith sounds amazing. Um, definitely want to check out that Avatar game. It looks pretty good. But um, the most impressed I'm with is that Rock, at, at Rocksmith and the DLC from Far Cry. Amazing stuff. Good job, Ubisoft. Gearbox, now Godfall. <sighs> good God. Getting cross-gen play and launching for the first, launching for the PS4 on August 10th. The PS4 version of Godfall also comes with a free PS5 upgrade. A Fire and Darkness expansion was announced alongside an upcoming Lightbringer update, which allows players to earn cursed loot and fashionable new armor. Hmm. <laughs> Randy Pitchford gave us a behind the scenes look at the Borderlands movie coming soon. Uh, we didn't get much look at the film, but he did give us a authentic look at a Valdorf Infinity prop. Uh, we were hoping to get a few glimpses of somebody uh, getting to work there as a, maybe a tiny Tina, but you know, we got some little, little, little close there. Uh, Pitchford also confirmed about two thirds of the film is done shooting. And we want this to be a gateway drug for non-Borderlands films, said director Eli Roth. So, for those of you who haven't played the games, if you see the movie, you might be going back to get those games. And then finally, the developers for Tribes of Midgard walk us through what to expect from the game due to launch on July 27th. Good job, Gearbox. Still is Godfall all day. Godfall. Gonna be amazing. 
and the most recent piece we got here, people, the Xbox Bethesda conference. So let's run through this, y'all. Bethesda's next big game, Starfield, is coming exclusively to Xbox on November 11th of next year. The trailer is about two minutes and 20 seconds long and begins on a nondescript but clearly alien planet aboard a vessel called the Constellation. The narrator talks about venturing into a field of stars and we get a look inside the interior of the Constellation, which looks reminiscent of the space age ships from the 1960s. Beautiful game, y'all. Say what you will about Bethesda, but they may take forever to put a game together, but when they finally give you a game, it is life changing. <laughs> so say what you will. Xbox and Playground Games also announced Forza Horizon 5, which takes takes the genre of leading open world racing series to Mexico for what's described as the largest, most diverse horizon ever. Y'all, it looks amazing. Coming November 9th of this year, and it was revealed that it will be part of the showcase at this week's E3, and it was dope. Dope, 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 dope. Please check that out. Xbox, Xbox Studios announces Redfall. Y'all, this game looks incredibly dope. I can't wait to get my hands on this. It's a vampire shooter from Arcane Studio. The heavily stylized trailer gave us a glimpse of a various characters battling vampires. It will be an open world co-op first person shooter developed by Arcane Austin. Man, y'all, this, wow, just wow. This one's gonna be dope. Also exclusively for Xbox and it will come to PC eventually. Diablo 2 Resurrected will officially be released on September 23rd of this year and will feature an eight player co-op and the game will run at up to 4K. Hmm, good job there. Contraband, a new co-op open world from Just Cause developer Avalanche Studios was announced. The game will be set in a 1970s smuggler paradise called Bion. No gameplay yet, but we did get a glimpse of a rather charming map. You can get a feel for what it looks like. Check out the gallery online. 12 minutes, it features both Daisy Ridley and James McAvoy. Amazing game, available August 19th of this year, and will be available on Xbox Game Pass on day one. Among Us is getting 15 player lives in their future, meaning you can have even more people to lie to and more people who will be sus. And finally, Doom Eternal is coming to Xbox Game Pass and will be getting a next-gen upgrade on June 29th of this year that will allow the game to run at 60 flops with ray tracing, be able within 2, Rage, Fallout, Fallout 2, Fallout 3, Fallout Tactics, Dishonor, and Arxis Fatalities will also be joining the Xbox Game Pass. So... There's all your E3 news so far. Like I said, people, we will definitely be giving you the rest as it develops online at our social media accounts. And we will recap it all again on next week's episode of the YSG podcast. Until then, I am going to get out of here. Thank you all for listening. Please, please like this podcast, subscribe to the podcast, follow this content, let your boy know what you think about the content. Visit the website, doyouspeakgeek.com. Don't forget about that promo code for the merch. 20% off using promo code DAD2021. Follow us on social medias, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Check out our YouTube channel. Like, subscribe, all the videos there. As always, people, live to play, play to win, win to live. I speak geek. Do you speak geek?